بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس سو وی آر آن دا لیکچر سکس آف انٹروڈکشن ٹو کمپیوٹنگ کورس ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس دا سسٹم یونٹ سو دا سسٹم یونٹ از ان فیکٹ دی موسٹ امپارٹنٹ کمپوننٹ آف اے کمپیوٹر سسٹم بٹ ایز آئی ٹولڈ یو ان دا پریویس لیکچرس دیٹ دیر آر مینی ڈیٹیلس اینڈ ان شاء اللہ اسٹیپ بائی اسٹیپ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو کور آل دیز ڈیٹیلس so with that let me go to the next slide yes uh, so our objective for this uh, lecture is we are going to differentiate among various styles of system unit and then we are going to identify chips adapter cards and other components of a motherboard we are going to describe the components of a processor and how they complete a machine cycle so we are also going to discuss what is a machine cycle We are going to identify the characteristics of various personal computer processors on the market today. Uh, we define a bit and describe how a series of bit represent data. Explain how program, programs transfer in and out of computer memory. We are going to differentiate among the various type of memory. Describe the types of expansion slots and adapter cards. Explain the difference among a serial port and a parallel port, a USB port and other ports. Describe how buses contribute to computer processing speed. And in the last inshallah, identify the components in mobile and mobile computers and in mobile devices. So we, with that, let us uh, start, formally start our today's lecture. So what is a system unit? Um, so a system unit is in, is in fact the main um, unit or you can say the case that contains the electronic components of a computer used to process data. So uh, in a typical desktop computer system, you can see that this is a system unit. So this contains uh, important electronic components um, that can be processor, RAM, expansion slots, power supply, different types of chip, ROM memory, CDs, ports, etc. So sometimes they are also called chases. So it's up to you. But in Mac, you can see that it can this can be a system unit or uh, most of the time you see the system unit right behind the monitor. In laptop system, you see the system unit just be beneath this keyboard. So we have um, place for hard disk, for RAM, for ROM, etc, etc. And then, of course, system unit also are also there on the smartphones, on PDA, etc. So, system unit is in fact uh, the main um, uh, component or the chassis that further contains other important parts of computer system. So, now we are going to uh, go into the details. So, so, what are the common common components inside the system unit? So, uh, if you open the system unit, so this is a typical chassis or a case. If you open it and um, if you look at it, you will find many uh, like videos on the YouTube uh, where you can like uh, study or uh, see that what's inside. So we have a processor, we have RAM or memory, we have adapter cards such as sound cards and we have modem cards, uh, sound cards are there to enhance sound or for sound purpose, modem modulation, demod demodulation card is for the internet. To enhance the quality of video you can use the video card and then for the networking if you want to connect to another computer you use uh, network card and there are uh, different uh, types of ports and there are driveways and there uh, we also have a power supply that is used to supply the required amount of electricity to the different components of a computer system use so you can see that um, we have a processor processor look like this and then we have a ram a sound card and a video card modem and network card and these are the ports and this is like the power supply and we have different driveways we can where you can insert the hard disk or other cd-rom drive or dvd drive but uh, just as I, as i told you in the previous class there's not that nowadays very uh, few people use cd-rom drive or dvd because nowadays now, nowadays they are replaced by um, usb sticks or memory sticks etc or you can also like transfer a large amount of data from one computer to another computer through internet because this speed has enhanced a lot um, currently i am using a 8 megabyte of connection in my home 
so previously it was not possible so with the increase in the speed of the internet uh, people are able to share large amount of data with each other with each other so that is why the use of cd rom drive dvd rom drive and especially the floppy drive and the use of memory sticks are very rare now nowadays okay so with that um, these are some important components of a computer system uh, we are going to talk about all these things in detail in the coming slides so then if somebody may ask you what is the motherboard so you can say that motherboard is the main circuitry or the main circuit board in a system unit where all the components are connected so you can clearly see in that picture this is the this is the complete motherboard and it has memory slots for ram it has memory chips like these memory chips are ram chips this is your processor and these are different types of adapter cards like video card sound card modem network card and these are expansion slots whenever you want to like enhance the processing or the performance of your computer system so you can uh, add different video audio uh, sound cards etc so uh, motherboard is a main circuit board in a system unit it contain adapter card processor chip and memory chip and it is uh, also called a system board or a motherboard or whatever you call it but this is how motherboard look like it had it has different types of capacitors transistors chips rom are also there so rom permanently stores data and you can see that there is a cell and other types of expansion slots so there are many details uh, you do not have to worry about them but this is how a typical motherboard looks like and um, you can see that uh, there are different types of chips that are located uh, or snug into the motherboard so somebody may ask you what is a chip it is a small piece of semiconducting material on which integrated circuits are etched so what does that mean like integrated circuit are permanently it etched uh, inside it so um, the integrated circuit contain many microscopic pathway capable of carrying data or electrical signals so chips uh, are packaged so that um, they can be attached to a circuit board so you can see that this is a small chip uh, this this is a like dual in line package holds a memory chip so this is a memory chip uh, it's also called a dip memory chip um, this is uh, how large this memory chip is so this is pin grid array chips hold the processor chip so this chip normally when you when you attach it on the motherboard so it will hold your processor so that this is how the chip look and uh, once again let me tell you because this is introduction to computing course so do, you do not have to really worry about it worry about the internal architecture or the working of these chips you just have to like know that there are chips there are processor and they are of small size there are many microscopic pathways inside it for carrying electric circuits so then uh, there is uh, the main component what is the central processing unit or the cpu cpu uh, in fact interprets and carry out the basic instruction that operate the computer so the basic operating system instructions are carried out by the cpu in fact cpu is divided further into two parts one is called the control unit which directs and coordinates the operation in a computer system so it's it is just like a traffic police instructor which is directing and coordinating the traffic um, uh, like um, uh, traffic cars etc bicycle etc but uh, we have another uh, part of the processor which is called arithmetic logic unit or alu alu performs arithmetic like mathematical type of operation comparison operation and logical operation and cpu is also called a processor but just just uh, uh, like near to cpu we we have a slot where your ram is um, snugged in uh, where your ram is located and this ram is very important because the ram gives the data and instruction to the cpu uh, and cpu then uh, perform the necessary operation and then give result back to the uh, ram so normally what you do you accept data from the input device you also accept data from the storage device it goes inside the ram or the memory then for processing it is forwarded to the processor where the some processing if it is arithmetic or 
mathematical operation then this unit will be activated uh, otherwise the control and coordination is performed by the CU or control unit then after processing data data you uh, convert it into information and that process data or information is displayed or transferred to the output device it is displayed on the monitor or printed on the printer screen so this is what central processing unit it is the brain of a computer system it is the most important part of the computer system all uh, all parts are important but brain like it, it is the same as the human brain which carries instruction which executes instruction and which tell the other parts um, of the body that what uh, how and what should they they do it instruct them and also um, create coordination among them so <coughs> Um, a central processing unit actually execute a machine cycle. So what is a machine cycle? So there are four basic operation of CPU which compromise a machine cycle. So we have step number one where the control unit fetches the math problem instruction and data from the memory. So the CU then the responsibility of CU is to fetch the problems instruction and associated data from the memory. So then the data is fetched and then it is provided to uh, like we go to the step two where the control unit decodes the math problem like we have to interpret it decode it that problem and then send the instruction and data to the ALU after decoding it send the data to the arithmetic logic unit where uh, the data is processed and in step number three the ALU perform calculation on the data so for example if it is multiplication operation so two three or thousand of these numbers will be multiplied and the result will be sent to the step four where the result of math operation is stored in a memory and then uh, further on uh, the result is in the memory appears on the screen of the monitor so whatever you see on the monitor is in fact fetched from the main memory so you cannot say that the data is directly fetched from the processor or from the hard disk or from the modem data has to travel first to the main memory and then main 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 memory uh, transfer that, that data to to the processor processor uh, performs it uh, its operation execute those um, instruction and perform um, uh, manipulates and per, uh, the data uh, perform different mathematical arithmetic and compa comparison operation on the data and then after that gives data back to the main memory and from main memory it is transferred to the monitor for the user to see the result so this is what these four steps compromises a machine cycle okay i hope that it is clear to you so then we have uh, another concept and which is called pipelining pipelining uh, is used in order to increase the performance of a computer system so we have uh, two example in example one where uh, the computer is without pipelining so instruction one first fetches the instruction decodes it executes and then store it and then after the completion of instruction one section instruction two is then executed where fetching is performed decoding is performed execution is form, performed and then storage is performed so in this scheme uh, we are like wasting a lot of time because at only one time one operation is performed whereas uh, if you perform machine cycle with pipeline with pipelining then the same instruction will be executed uh, uh, on the same time so instruction one is uh, like on the store state instruction two may be in the execute state ex ex instruction three may be in the decode stage and instruction four may be in the fetch state but all are executed concurrently simultaneously and that is what pipelining means so CPU begins fetching second instruction before completing the machine cycle of the first instruction. This is called pipelining. The result is a faster processing, just as, as just as I told you. So let me check out the time because uh, okay, we still have six minutes, and let us switch back to the slides. So this is what pipelining is. And then uh, there is a special type of memory inside the central processing unit which is called the register. So registers are temporary high speed storage area that hold data and instruction. So there is another type of memory that is even more faster than RAM and even more faster than cache memory located inside the CPU and they are called registers. So what is the purpose of registers? So registers um, store location from where instruction 
was fetch store instruction while it is being decoded like it is very temporary memory it store data for very short amount of time so what does it store it store location from where instruction was fetched store instruction while it is being decoded so it 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 will store instruction that is uh, that is uh, decoded by the a control unit and it stores the result of a calculation it stores the data while alu computes it stores stores data while alu computes it so for example i am telling you to add 5 plus 5 so what will you do you will temporarily store that 5 plus 5 data inside your brain you will also store the add operation and then you will perform addition operation and then result 10 will be like uh, return back to me so here that temporary data whenever you store that temporary data inside your brain neurons so uh, that temporary uh, a register also store like your nor neuron which store temporary data for short amount of time a register is i mean similar to them they store data they are very high speed memory uh, units they store data for a very short period of time and then when the instruction is executed that data uh, is vanished and the new instruction is then uh, the new instruction is then entered and the, the location and the instruction itself and the results all are uh, stored in those register area so they are mainly uh, depending upon the architecture of a computer system there can be 16 to 232 registers or even 64 register and each register has its own operation so these topics are very advanced you do not have to once again let me tell you you do not have to worry about them uh, these uh, the concepts are studied in detail in like computer architecture uh, and organization uh, i mean um, students of bscs study them in their advanced um, architecture courses there is another concept called the system clock so what is a system clock controls timing of all computer operation generates a regular electronic pulse or ticks that sets operating pace of components of a system unit so each tick is a clock cycle so one second could be a clock cycle two second could be a clock cycle so in that second pace of a system clock is clock speed most clock speeds are in the gigahertz of uh, in the range one gigahertz is equal to one billion ticks of a system clock per second Processor speeds can also be measured in millions of instructions per second. So if millions of instructions are executed in one second, so we said that millions of instructions per second, MIPS. So the more you have the clock speed, it means that um, the more instruction is executed by the computer system and it means that the more the computer is having um, a greater performance. So for example, in per, uh, in uh, each tick is a, a clock cycle so pace of a system clock is called clock speed so uh, in if in one second um, we have one million uh, clock cycle so in, it means that a uh, computer can then execute one million instruction in one second so this is what gigahertz also mean that uh, one billion ticks of a system per second so it, it, it we can say that the uh, one billion instruction are Okay, the system is capable of executing one billion instruction in one second so that is a very great speed okay so with that uh, how do uh, how do personal computer processor compares so uh, in personal computer you can have a variety of processor itanium processor axion itanium um, like to they, they are data introduced and these are their clock speed so itanium 2 has i think uh, yes 1 gigahertz of clock speed and then um, pentium 4 has 1.4 gigahertz nowadays uh, core i7 and uh, have i mean they have um, you can say that uh, around about 2.5 or 3 3.4 uh, gigahertz speeds so uh, like depending upon the architecture of the computer you have different uh, uh, processor speed mayer in gigahertz or megahertz so uh, uh, the reason that core i7 core i3 core i5 are faster is um, not because they have um, a processor of very high gigahertz or uh, so this is because we are using multiple processor uh, so after i think after 3. 
four or three point five gigahertz. Uh, so the um, uh, if you still increase the uh, speed of the processor, so it may melt down. So the other solution, the smarter solution, is to use more than one uh, processor, just as we have uh, in Core i seven, Core i five, or in Core i three uh, computer system. So these are it, uh, the typical um, uh, like uh, which processor you should be select. So this is another important question. The faster the processor, the more expensive the computer. So you have to be like uh, uh, do a trade off where um, uh, like you should also see uh, your budget and also the like uh, what is your need uh, to you know in order to get a, a computer system or in order to buy a processor because you there are computers there are uh, which are very expensive so you cannot say that because they are very expensive so I'm going to buy it you also have to look at to your budget so with that um, inshallah we are going to continue um, uh, this uh, talk about system unit um, for now um uh, i would say that uh, if you have some queries or problem you can post it on the google group and I, i'll happily answer your problems and queries um inshallah i'll see you in the next lecture till then take care allah hafiz